Next up, as I just mentioned, we got an eye-popping new view of the cosmos this week thanks to the first images from a powerful new telescope that lets us see farther into the depths of the universe and further back in time than we ever have before. Amazing things about telescopes is that they are literally time machines. They allow us to see the universe as it was in the distant past. The nearest star to us is four light years away. That means light has taken four years to arrive to us. We are actually able to see in the past by looking at distant galaxies because that light left so long ago, we're seeing them as they were in the past. And not only that, but this new telescope is able to collect these beautiful detailed images far faster than the older technology. This is an engineering image that was really there just to say we focused it right and there's a lot of galaxies. You know, you know the, the engineers were like, what are all those galaxies doing there? <laughs> we're realizing we're the first people that have ever seen these galaxies. Since the first Hubble Deep Fields in the 90s, where Hubble just stared at an empty patch of the sky for, for days at a time and made this beautiful deep field. We just did that in about under an hour. What that makes possible is that every field's a deep field now. <laughs> there are observations planned that are weeks long instead of just an hour. Everything about these images that I've seen so far tells us absolutely this thing is going to be fantastic. We don't know what we're going to see, but we know we haven't seen anything like this before. This is going to be transformative. This is looking amazing. And it's all made possible by the James Webb Space Telescope, a 30-year, $10 billion project chronicled in NOVA's latest documentary, Ultimate Space Telescope, which, thank goodness, premieres tonight. And I'm joined by the director, Terry Randall, and Dr. Nicole Colon, an astrophysicist with NASA and Webb Deputy Project Scientist for Exoplanet Science. Dr. Colon, I want to start with you first because, you know, every day I come home from work and I sit with my daughter and we talk about the news of the day, and she asked me to describe what we saw and I said well it's the past but it's the future and it's a grain of sand and it's kind of like the end of Men in Black when they open the locker and everybody's <laughs> everybody's in there. Can you tell us what is it that we were looking at? Yes so that's the exciting thing is that when we have a telescope like this it's almost like a time machine right? We can look at these galaxies we took these images you know last month but the light in those images took 13 billion years to get to our telescope. And that's because they formed in the early universe. So if you look at those now, those galaxies are probably not there today. They've probably already merged and done, you know, things where they cause new stars to form and die and all that. But we can capture their light because it just got to us from back when they first formed. And, and can you explain to me how, how did this just like happen? I know this has been a, uh, <laughs> hundreds of years in the making, but um, everyone seems so amazed that this is what we're seeing. Is, is that all true? Like just, it just happened, we did it, it worked, and now we're shocked to see how beautiful and vast um, the, the, the universe and everything is without us having known before? Well, whenever we develop any new telescope, including the James Webb Space Telescope, we definitely predict what we're going to see. You know, this telescope was designed to see some of the early light from the universe. But what we don't always expect is how good things will work <laughs> once we're up in space. You know, a launch has to go perfectly. All the deployments have to go perfectly. The mirrors have to be really clean. And we can just collect images sometimes better than we expected. And so it is thanks to the work of thousands of people, including so many engineers and scientists that that has led us to this point today. Terry, Randall, talk to me about, about your reaction. Obviously, you've been uh, very immersed, if you will, in, in these issues and in this science. But when, when you saw these photos and the images that have been coming up, what, what was your reaction? <laughs> well, relief with the team that everything was working because until they you know, start taking those pictures, I mean, it, this is such an engineering marvel and it's such a feat of engineering. And they had so many years of ups and downs that once it was launched, we were excited. Once it was the two weeks of deployment, everybody was on edge and just, it's wonderful to see what they've accomplished. 
Talk to me, uh, uh, yeah, Terry, talk to me about the science of this telescope and some of the comparisons between what we had and what we were relying on and what, what this telescope can do versus, versus the other technology we have. And I say we like I was involved in it, but you know what I mean? <laughs> You know, we, this is what we talk about in the, in the program is that the, the mirror is huge in comparison to Hubble. It's a million miles from Earth, so it's in a position where it can get um, images like this that are very hard to get. Um, and it's got this huge sun shield that's shielding it from the light of the Earth and the moon and the sun, so it really can peer deeply into space. And those things really make it totally unique. And how does this contribute? Obviously, I know that scientists um, both love to be proven right and proven wrong because it helps them to advance discovery and, dis and science. And this helps to prove them right in many cases when compared to the Hubble, the web compared to the Hubble, what the Hubble saw. How does this contribute overall to our scientific community? Wow, you know, what the scientists were telling me over and over again is this is the future of space science uh, in the community around the world. So if it didn't work, it would have been a disaster for that. But the fact that it is working at working better than they thought it was gonna work. I think there are questions, as they tell me all the time, there are questions that they, they haven't even begun to pose about what they're gonna start to learn and what questions will come up based on what they learned. But I don't think there's an area of, of space science they're not gonna cover with this telescope. Nicole, I kept hearing over and over about this grain of sand that uh, folks were looking at and, and uh, that I got lost on, on that part. And also learning that there's so much more to be seen um, that this is, again, just a tiny grain of sand. Can you explain to me what, what we're looking at and how much of it we're seeing and this deep view part, can you explain that to yes, me too? Yes. Yeah. So I, I think it's another analogy I've heard is, you know, imagine holding up your, your hand extended to a, um, to the sky and you put your thumbprint, that part of the sky that you cover with your fingertip, it's the size of the deep field. So imagine how many parts of the sky there are there are that many galaxies times that many parts of the sky. It's trillions of galaxies. So Webb has looked at one tiny portion of, of our universe already in just these few images and including the deep field, but even Stefan's quintet with the merging galaxies, there's a bunch of galaxies behind there photobombing, <laughs> you know, that, that quintet. And there's just galaxies everywhere. So yeah, almost every image is a deep field, exactly. And, and Terry, um, let's talk about the space, the world of space business and space science. You know, we are in our lifetimes living in such a different world. I mean, I vividly recall when I was, you know, six and we landed on the moon and NASA and the space race. And it was then the period where it seemed it, it, the, 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 it was not going to be a priority. And there's been all of these budget discussions about where it should go and where it shouldn't. And now we've got this, you know, private industry of space um, business. I'll call it space business, which is leading in some ways um, the technology. What does this do now for the everyday person when they're thinking about what we should be funding, you know, when, when they watch NOVA, when they watch the program tonight? What do you think they're going to come away with? Well, hopefully they'll be inspired by just the sheer beauty of what we're seeing. And I think inspired by a team of researchers from around the world who came together and could work together, regardless of language or background, and could do something so difficult and make it work. So I'm, I'm inspired by this group effort. And I think this can be done in many different areas of, of uh, problems that we face. I think science is an example of that. Nicole, I was also uh, struck by watching um, NASA reach out to so many viewers across, across the world uh, when these pictures were revealed and seeing the joy and the excitement. Um, it must feel so great to be connected to people um, reacting in that way. 
I, yeah, I can't even put it into words. You know, it's, it's so, it's so humbling really to see reactions from, you know, not just friends and family, but like you said, the entire community, the public humans, right. As a society that they can appreciate the beauty of the universe with web and these first images. Um, there's just, you know, so much joy that we, we want to share because this is a telescope, you know, for everybody to understand our universe. The scientists, yeah, we use the data, you know, we, we get the images, we analyze them, but it's all so that we can communicate to the public what we learn, right? And what that means about our place in the universe. Terry, there was, there was that moment, of course, in the 60s, the, the little blue little blue dot, you know, when, when astronauts uh, in space saw the Earth and we sort of saw ourselves for the first time where we were in relation to the, the rest of the universe and, and the galaxy. Obviously, the 60s were a very divisive time. We're in a very divisive time right now. Do you think um, that this shared experience, this, this working on, on um, the James Webb Space um, telescope and seeing these photos, do you think this is an opportunity for humanity to, to, to see where we are and maybe find some unity? I hope so. I think that scientists, you know, seeing these teams and, and over the next many years, 10 to 20 years, teams around the world are working together. The, um, what they call the early release signs, which will be starting, I think, even tomorrow, um, there are, if you look at the teams, there's members from everywhere and they're all coming together either on Zoom or in person to work together. So it is a great example of cooperation. How long uh, were you working on Ultimate Space Telescope? How long uh, have you been working on, on the program? Um, actively for about a year, but we started, Nova started looking into it in 2017, but as, uh, as you know, it was delayed. So we were very, very happy that 2021 worked out because we had started working on the film and then the launch was delayed and it was delayed and it was like, we really hope. <laughs> We started this at the right time. Nicole knows this well. <laughs> I can only imagine. And then, you know, certainly having a positive result certainly helps as well, not just for all of us. Nicole, you know, one thing that I've been fascinated about learning uh, over, over the pandemic and all the reading that I've been doing about how differently everybody views, including all species view things, you know, how animals see different colors, how we have different feelings, how our brains are oriented between each other, you know, how my heartbeat and my blood pressure impacts what I see. Like we're all living in our own hallucination. Um, and this to me really struck me as a hallucination, seeing things um, that we couldn't see before just really opens up the possibility of what we're not seeing. Is that um, exciting, scary? What do you feel when you think about, about the enormity of that? It's, it's definitely fascinating to me. One thing that I didn't realize even myself or I didn't appreciate it like you said, we are literally seeing things a new way, right? With this telescope, our range of colors in the visible light is very limited. Actually, we have, sure, we have a lot of colors, but it's such a tiny part of what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. So the infrared light that Webb can access, it covers so many more colors, if you will. And we don't even have enough colors to relate to that. So we get to see so much more information. It's almost overwhelming, but in a good way. You know? <laughs> I'm going to keep that positive viewpoint that it's a good thing and I'm not going to totally freak out. I'll be certainly watching tonight, Terry. Nova's Ultimate Space Telescope is on tonight. It premieres uh, at 9 on GBH2 and online at pbs.org slash Nova. Uh, Terry Randall and Nicole Colon, thank you so much. Congratulations to both of you for your work and all that you're doing. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.